Good morning and welcome to Unity Church of Delaware Sunday morning service. I'm Claudia Carawan filling in for Reverend Joanne. So you are in the right place. And uh, we're going to get things started right now with a little sing-along. Uh, the words are easy for you. In the garden of my soul, I am happy, healed, and whole. I know that God is good and all is well. there. And if you're just now joining us, I'm Claudia Carawan from Richmond, Virginia, your guest artist for today. And a little about me before we get started. I'm a singer, songwriter, and recording artist who lives in Richmond, Virginia. I create what I call positively soulful music, music to lift your vibe. I'm a storyteller, a music teacher, and I also serve my community, Unity of Bon Air, which is in the Richmond historic area. And I've been a music director there for over 20 years. Now, um, I don't think I'm a total stranger to your community. I visited you last in 2005, ah, 2015. Um, but um, I was so delighted to um, get an invitation to come back. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, this presentation has been pre-recorded, but I do hope that you'll feel free to leave messages and leave your comments. I'll be checking in after the uh, message airs. And um, one last final disclaimer. I am wearing a lot of hats today. I am your video production technician, the lighting director, the sound man, the musician, and the guest speaker. So I hope you'll be forgiving if there are a few glitches. Um, with that being said, <laughs> let's move into our opening prayer. So I invite you to close your eyes wherever you are right now as we move into a time of prayer. Let your body relax as you breathe deeply. Focus on your breath. And as you breathe deeply, recognize this life force within you that sustains you so effortlessly. Be aware of this presence and be thankful. We know that God is good that never ends and power that knows no bounds. We envision God's healing power of divine life, restoring, healing, and revitalizing our world and our country in this very moment. We envision God's healing power of divine life, bringing peace, and kindness to the world and to our country 
right here and now. We affirm that all those we know and love are safe, healthy, and protected. We see our mindset of love and acceptance envelop those whose lives we touch. That love that we are surpasses anything that we can understand or imagine. We are forever thankful for who we are and who we are becoming in this sea of love. And we are grateful for this time together where we gather together in unity, and so it is. Amen. And now I'd like to share a song I wrote a few years ago. It's called Beautiful. Sometimes this world can break your spirit, that's for sure. Comparisons and doubt will leave you feeling insecure. But you can't hide what you are inside. You are beautiful, golden like the sun. Shine your light here on everyone. You illuminate the night like a morning star. I see you as you truly are. You are beautiful. Ooh, beautiful. You're beautiful. Ooh, 
The name of my talk is Your Beautiful Impact. Years ago, I had the opportunity to hear Maya Angelou speak in Richmond, Virginia. She was so inspiring. She told everyone in attendance that night that we were rainbows in the clouds, bringing beauty to the world. I loved hearing her words, and I think of them often. Today, Using a few short stories, I'm going to explore her message that when we shine, we have a beautiful impact on one another and in our world. It's true. In fact, we stand on the shoulders of those who came before us, both friends, family, and total strangers. And in turn, we do our part by shining our light and passing it on. Life is a miracle. And when our eyes are open, inspiration is all around. Albert Einstein said, there are only two ways to live your life. One is though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is. I'll begin now with a story. So the year was 2016, and a couple of dear friends invited my husband and I to a jazz concert at the University of Richmond. Jazz vocalist Diana Reeves and her magnificent band gave a powerful performance that night. And as we slowly exited the crowded concert hall, I turned to my husband and said, I need to go to the ladies' room. I'll meet you in a few minutes in the lobby. I followed the signs to find the ladies' room, and uh, once I got there, I became aware of something peculiar. There was a sign posted on the door, a handwritten sign. It said, trans people welcome. Now, I blinked at that and processed for a minute because at first I didn't know what it meant, and then I remembered that earlier that year, a political firestorm had erupted when the state of North Carolina passed an anti-LGBTQ law, in part prohibiting trans people from using the bathroom of their gender identity uh, in schools and government buildings. You know, I never really thought that much about the issue, but as I waited outside the bathroom door, I was thinking about this issue. I thought the law was misguided and mean-spirited but at the same time, somebody here on the campus of University of Richmond had taken the time to create a homemade sign and put it on the door. You are welcome. I just felt so touched by this simple act of generosity. You see, the political climate in our country had been so toxic that if you only watched the news, you would have thought that everybody was angry. But here, this sign, this small gesture of love from a total stranger reminded me that kindness was alive and well. Well, all of a sudden, I became aware of the fact that I was not standing alone outside of the ladies' room waiting to go in. A lovely elderly woman um, appeared and was standing next to me, and she was dressed impeccably. And um, I will tell you that the area in which I live is rather conservative. And this woman, she leaned in to read the sign. And she said, trans people welcome. And just in that moment, I started to brace myself for what I thought was going to be an uncomfortable conversation. Um, and then she said to me, trans people welcome. Well, isn't that a thoughtful gesture? <laughs> I wanted to hug her. We spoke for a few minutes, and then before I knew it, another person was standing outside the ladies' room. This was her husband, and he was teasing us because there's always, always a line in the ladies' room. And um, we showed him the sign, 
and the three of us, total strangers, we agreed that the sign was a good sign. This was a beautiful impact moment for me, a moment when my faith and idealism were restored, a moment in which I remembered what I had forgotten. Yeah, there are angry people out there. There sure are. But there are a lot of good people, and I still maintain that most people would give you the shirt off their back if you needed it. On a side note, that sign reminded me how easy it is to start a love revolution. Someone on that campus, some love warrior, decided to take action on an issue that was important to them. I believe that everybody that stood outside of that bathroom waiting for admittance had to pause and think about this issue. This story reminds me of a quote from Mother Teresa who said, there are no great acts. Only small acts performed with great love. Which brings me to another story. This next story is about another person who impacted my life in a meaningful way. When I was a teenager, I was a nonconformist and a loner. I knew I wanted to be a musician one day, but my parents did not approve of that career choice for me. And they didn't know how to mentor the creativity I, in me. But life is good. There's a saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And I found a mentor in my high school English teacher, Mr. Bogart. Now, Mr. Bogart was a lot like me, a loner and a nonconformist. He had long, hippie-length hair, and he looked way more like a student than a teacher. There was also a rumor that he was a musician, and that made him really, really cool to me. However, Mr. Bogart was very strict. He made us keep a journal and write in it daily for 15 minutes every day. This was a graded activity. He said, we all need to develop a daily discipline to be successful in life. And then he would say, you must develop discipline. Well, everybody groaned at the thought of doing this, including me. But as soon as I found my journal was a safe place for me to write my thoughts and goals and dreams, and I realized there was no grown-up looking over my shoulder saying, that's not practical. Mr. Bogart introduced us to Julius Caesar, Romeo and Juliet, and poetry, and somehow made it very interesting. He found ways to make comparisons between great literary works and great music, thus earning my absolute respect. You know, after all these years, I still have a paper graded by Mr. Bogart. It had two things written on it, A plus and the word succinct. Now, back then, I didn't know what succinct meant, but I was not going to ask him. I ran to the dictionary, probably the very first time in my academic career that I cracked open a dictionary, <laughs> and there it was. Succinct meant direct, concise, to the point. Now, I know this might seem small, but I now had a new way of seeing myself. I was succinct. So I learned and I thrived in his classroom. And as I look back through the years, I realized he had a huge impact on me, a beautiful impact on me, nurturing my creativity. But I never really thanked him. When I returned to school the following year, he had left. Many, many years later, I realized I had to find him and thank him. I didn't exactly know how to do this. This was before Facebook. But um, wouldn't you know, through a series of wonderful coincidences, life led me to him. And I finally got a chance to call him on the phone. I thanked him for mentoring me and for being the best teacher I ever had. I thanked him for inspiring me to develop my creativity and letting me know that I was smart. I told him I still kept my journal after all these years, and I thanked him for having a beautiful impact on my life. Mr. Bogart said to me, 
I really appreciate your call. But I'm somewhat surprised that I had that kind of impact on anyone. And then I said, Mr. Bogart, you threw me a lifeline. And consider this. I'm passing it on. Now I am a teacher, and I hear myself saying these things to my students all the time. You must develop discipline. Your impact is huge, impossible to measure. <sighs> like Mr. Bogart, we may never fully understand our impact in this world. I've come to realize that we are all, each one of us, beautiful threads in this magnificent tapestry called life. We lack the ability to see this tapestry from a bird's eye view, so we never fully understand the role we play or see our part. But nevertheless, we are a part of the masterpiece. It's a miracle the way we bump up against one another, giving a word of encouragement, sharing needed information, sometimes bringing unpleasant things up to the surface to be healed. The impact of your life is a wonder. You are the light in someone's life, the lifeline in someone's turbulent ocean. Do you realize the power of your words or the impact of your kindness? You know, in today's world, we fail to see kind kindness as the powerful thing that it is. It seems somehow weak, but kindness in action leaves a lasting impression, which brings me to my last story. It was the week of Thanksgiving, 2017, and my daughter had just come home from college for the weekend. I was thrilled to see her, and I wanted to spoil her. So I asked her if there was anything special that she wanted to eat. If there was a special dish or dessert, I would try to do my best to make it or find it. Well, she asked for a rhubarb pie. Now, I've never made a rhubarb pie. I've never cooked with rhubarb, but I said, okay. So off we went, the three of us, my husband, my daughter, and I on a quest for rhubarb. Now, <laughs> didn't realize it at the time, but rhubarb is out of season in fall. So nevertheless, we had quite an adventure. It was the day before Thanksgiving, as I mentioned, and everybody was out shopping. The stores were crowded, and a lot of people were picking up last-minute ingredients for their Thanksgiving feast. We went to three grocery stores and found no rhubarb. Our last stop was a Walmart, and wouldn't you know, no rhubarb. By this time, we were exhausted, disappointed, and grumpy. What a terrific waste of our time. We grabbed a few last minute items and stood in a very long checkout line without the rhubarb. Now looking around the store, it appeared to me that I was not the only one that was in a bad mood. I looked at the other shoppers and the store workers. No one was smiling. There was no interaction. Just a bunch of exhausted, detached people. My daughter stared at her cell phone, and I continued people watching. We slowly moved closer and closer to the front of the checkout line. That's when I noticed the woman that was standing in front of us who was being waited on. I also noticed a gentleman who was looking very agitated, standing on the other side of the checkout line. He was holding grocery bags. Um, and it appeared that he had just paid for his groceries, but he wasn't leaving the store. He just kept staring back, you know, into the store. And I was really wondering, what's his problem? What's up with him? Then it all came into play. A woman, who must have been his partner, appeared. She had apparently gone back into the store to grab a few more items to purchase, but it was too late. He had already paid for his items, and he was not going to get back into that long line to pay for those last-minute purchases. He barked at her. He said, put them back. It's too late. Let's just get out of here. That's when the woman that was being waited on sprung into action. She said, nonsense, nonsense. And then she demanded, bring those items over here. And then she looked at the store clerk, and she said, put these items on my tab. 
Wait, in that brief exchange, a huge energy shift emerged. Now everybody that previously had been grumpy, everybody was present and awake. The clerk who had been scowling before was now smiling. A few people, including myself, laughed softly. And now my daughter looked up from her cell phone. Uh, what's going on, she said. And I said, a moment of kindness, a moment of goodwill. Now, the man reached for his wallet to reimburse the woman for the groceries. And she said, oh, no, oh, no. I tell you, God has been good to me. I say, pass it on. And then she looked right square in my eyes and said, I say, pass it on. What do you say? And I said, I'm with you. Pass it on. Well, she left. And we paid for our groceries. But now we were smiling. You know, that small gesture small, shifted our moods dramatically. And as we headed for the parking lot, my husband said, that was a very nice moment, wasn't it? And I agreed. And then he asked me the big, important question. He said, did you notice that woman was wearing an article of clothing that indicated she voted differently from us in the last election? And I responded, Yes, I did notice that. You know, had I seen her on the street, I might have judged her for wearing that article of clothing. But yet, this was another beautiful moment of beautiful impact when I went searching for rhubarb but ended up finding something much better. I remembered that kindness was alive and well, and the kindness that we extend to one another has a lasting impact. I hope my stories today inspire you to continue shining your light. Live your life with an awareness of the beauty that you bring to life. You know, like Maya Angelou says, you are a rainbow in the clouds. I'd like to close this talk by sharing a quote uh, from Thich Nhat Hanh. It's beautiful. He says, people usually consider walking on water or on thin air a miracle. But I think the real miracle is not to walk on water or on thin air, but to walk on earth. Every day, we're engaged in a miracle which we don't even recognize, a blue sky, Wow, white clouds, green leaves, the black, curious eyes of a child, our own two eyes, all is a miracle. Thank you so much, and namaste. And now it's time for us to move into our closing prayer. Please close your eyes and open your heart to these words. God created you for a unique purpose. You are here to be the eyes, the voice, the hands, and the feet of God in expression. You are a rainbow in the clouds, a person who brings hope to the world. You allow grace into your life to make any challenges light you are calm and poised. If there are worries, cares, or concerns, you release them and feel the love, peace, and presence of God with you now and always. Nothing can stand in the way of your peace. Nothing can disturb the calm peace of your soul, awash with the love of God. You are at ease in your body. You are aware that God restores and nurtures. And you are whole and wholesome. God's love, wisdom, strength, and power are yours. For we are all one in his divine nature. Thank you, God. 
Thank you, God, and amen. All right, and now it's time for a few announcements. All right, drum roll, please. The big news, Joanne and Joe will be back next Sunday. Yay! And I'm sure she'll have a lot of wonderful things to share. Um, the second announcement would be um, Joanne asked me to express gratitude to all of you for your generous support of Unity Church of Delaware. Donations can be made anytime via PayPal link on the church's website. And the website is, in case you don't know, unitydelawareohio.org. I'll say that again, unitydelawareohio.org. Um, she then asked me to make an announcement about my music, and um, I am easy to locate at claudiacarawan.com if you want to check out, purchase, or just visit with me, claudiacarawan.com.
And now, it's time for the prayer for protection. Say it with me. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Goodbye, friends.